This week in Nerf, we've got another new rival Overwatch blaster, a leaked Mega Blaster, and registration opening for a two-day West Coast Nerf event. I'm Jangular, and every Saturday morning, this is your source for first party, third party, and community Nerf news. Getting right on into it, let's talk about that rival blaster from the Overwatch tie-in that has been announced and been working on. We got the Reaper one recently, and uh, the latest announcement happened at China Joy in Sh uh, Shanghai, and this is the Diva Pistol. This has me supremely excited. I have wanted a nerf version of a Diva Blaster for quite a while. I remember even trying to get people to let me commission to make one uh, because there's just such a cool looking hand blaster and something that I'm very excited about. Now, it is going to be an internal magazine with a capacity of three rounds and is going to only hit about 80 FPS, which is down from the average 100 or so that we see. The thought is this is essentially a minimized Kronos, whether it's a smaller plunger tube or less powerful spring, or if the spring, the extra spring, I should say, uh, that's inside of this, I'm assuming, because it says it has spring-powered recoil. So I don't know if there's something else going on in there that is simulating recoil that maybe is taking away from the performance or if they've just lessened it because of the size and form factor or something along those lines. Regardless, I'm excited. I'm looking forward to this one and I'm, I'm definitely stoked. Now because it is an Overwatch licensed product, you can assume it's going to be more expensive than a basic Kronos would be. Probably $30 would be a safe guess. Uh, if I had to take a stab at it, but if you're an Overwatch fan, that's probably not too bad. You've probably dropped more than that in boxes in-game anyways, so at least you get something physical out of this one. Regardless, let me know what you think about this, because it is something very, very interesting, as I'm curious to see how things go with the bigger models in this line as they release them. This, like the Reaper Blaster, will be coming out in 2019. Next up, we had a leak pop up in a Chinese group that was for a Mega Blaster, the Bulldog. Now, I'm not gonna put an image up here, I don't think, because the images that I had saved or the pages I had saved had pulled them down and stated they were concerned over any potential legal matters, I guess, of the uh, images being of prototype blasters or production samples, rather, that had not been a uh, release, basically, there's concern over whether or not it's okay to post the images, so I'm going to be safe about this one and not post the images, though there are links that you can find the images of it. But, so you know, it is uh, seems to be like a tri-break reskin where it has a smart AR3 round barrel system. The difference here is, instead of the whole flip action, you now have a retractable stock that extends and retracts, and you have a grip that flips out, and it's just like a, a very scrunched down look. Uh, someone likened it to one of the SMGs from Halo, and I can kind of see that, just like scrunched and wide, and it's, it's if you search for the images, like I said, I'll, I'll link down below, but uh, it's an interesting visual look that I don't know if it does it for me, but if the performance is there, I could certainly see people singling this or uh, changing it for, you know, short darts, things like that, and maybe getting some nice gains out of it. But regardless, it's definitely interesting to see uh, the direction that the Mega line is going and a blaster name that it's not something you would expect. I'll put it that way. Bulldog is not a name I would expect for a Mega Blaster given the kind of theme they've been going with over the last couple of years. So regardless, interesting. Let me know your thoughts on this one uh, because you know, it's always cool to hear about everybody's ideas and assumptions and guesses on things when we get new leaks and blaster information and stuff like this. Again, no idea when this is coming out because it is a leak. It is something that we have very minimal information on but just wanted to let you know, even though I didn't have that image for you, my apologies again, just wanted to be safe. Uh, moving on, the uh, next thing I wanna talk about is actually an event. Uh, it's not often I talk about events that are taking place, but this one is, uh, well, 
It's a two-day weekend-long event here in San Jose on the West Coast with uh, multiple different games, and it's basically just a weekend of Nerf. It's called Ragnaroktoberfest. Now, these Ragnaroktoberfest games have happened the last two years, but this year they're really stepping it up. Uh, the first day of games is actually going to be one large game called The Stalking Dead, and this is a faction-based, objective-oriented PvP game uh, with some undead elements you could probably guess from the Stalking Dead name. Uh, but this is something that will take place throughout the course of the day at the location, which is a high school campus. So plenty of space to really spread out and play and have a large playing field uh, for plenty of people. But this is something that will introduce some new game mechanics, and uh, Nobacon is running this one. It's something they're very excited about and they've been working on, so I'm very interested to participate and see how it all goes. Day two is going to be PvP all day. It's going to be super stock games throughout the course of the day, but we're also going to be doing a BTA 5 versus 5 King of the Hill tournament with up to 16 teams, two fields running at the same time uh, with sponsors, prizes, I believe ammo counter and some other uh, potential sponsors for prizes for the tournament. And uh, there are sponsors like Foam Blast, like Out of Darts, uh, Silver Fox Industries, and uh, there will continue to be more, I hope, as time goes on and we get closer to the event, which, I'm sorry, is in October. Maybe I should have led with that. October 13th to 14th. And uh, there's just so much to talk about in this. I'm trying to condense as much as I can, but there's going to be a good amount of people there uh, that are creators, have YouTube channels, uh, things like that. You've got people like Bobo, people like Walcom, people like Captain Xavier, like Drac, like Out of Darts, uh, Nobacon. So many people are going. Mr. Nathan's going. I, Beret's going. There's just, there's more and more people uh, Alex from MTB, I'm going to keep remembering them as I keep going, and I, I apologize because I know I'm missing some. I know I mentioned Phone Blast is going to be there already, Nobacon is part of the group hosting it, so there's a lot of people going to this that uh, I'm looking forward to hanging out with, and I hope if you're able to, you can make it there to join the two-day event of Nerf Fun. Uh, I really want to see more of these. I think that's one of the big reasons to talk about these kind of weekend long events and such that are trying to pull people together is that the more of these we have and the more successful they are, the bigger our hobby grows, the more connected we become. And the better that is for our community, the more that happens. So I'm really excited about this and, and uh, looking forward to seeing how it all goes. So uh, the registration for that is now live. It just went live today. Uh, so you can sign up for all the different events and everything like that. Um, the website or the, the registration website and the Facebook event page will be linked down below. So I hope to see those of you that can make it there on the field because it should be a lot of fun. One more thing to talk about today and that is Flywheels of the World. This is Adrian Ward's new page. Now Adrian Ward is someone we've talked about for his tiny flywheel cages that fit inside recon shells. We talked about it first for his recon sleeper build and have since mentioned it in other people's builds uh, like Mr. Heathpants. Now he has made a page on Facebook to discuss and share the progress he's made as he is uh, working towards being able to release the files for his flywheel cage and potentially even do some production for certain components potentially. Uh, so all the information is going to be up on his page as things progress, which is fantastic because this is a really cool thing that he came up with and we're seeing it utilized more and more and people having interest in it, which is just fantastic because it's, it's some cool stuff and a really clever idea. On that topic of clever ideas being utilized, Mr. Heathpants has just started an Etsy page, which is MHP Arms. And on that Etsy page, he's taking pre-orders for the Dessert Pigeon. And we're talking about these together because the Dessert Pigeon does utilize one of Adrian Ward's flywheel cages for the small form semi-auto uh, mag-fed katana using blaster that's just freaking awesome. Oh my God, I, it's amazing. It's, it's this really awesome thing that we've talked about, I believe, in the past, and uh, it's now just about ready 
to be released into the wild as he gets closer and closer. So check out that Etsy. It is just, it's such a cool development that uh, both these guys have been working on. So I wanted to share both those things with all of you so you can go check them out. But that's going to bring us to our mod of the week. And this week it comes to us from Luke Alford. And this is Cerberus. This is a Strife Centurion integration, which is just really clean. I mean, it's just really nice looking. The lines are good. It looks, it looks clean. When an integration looks clean, it's just one of the greatest things because it really kind of blurs the line between what you expect to see and, and being able to pick out the parts of different blasters. And this, well, yes, if you've seen a Strife and a Centurion, you can gather that that's what this is, but it looks closer to something you would see from a single piece of a shell. It's essentially the kind of artistry that goes into integration work. So I appreciate the amount of time that went into something like this and the kind of uh, dedication. And he did a whole write-up and everything uh, that's up on Brit Nerf, which will be down below to go check out because it is cool to see and hear from people on all of what goes into their work, which I always appreciate and enjoy. So go check that out for sure. Last thing to talk about today is, of course, our video of the week. This week, it comes to us from Jet Blasters. Now, that may be a bit of a surprise, Jet Blasters being a company that sells things, and uh, they are a bit of a controversial company at that, with plenty of people that have their problems with them, which I understand. I get it. Put that aside for now. Take this video as a video, not as company branding. There is a little bit of product placement because they do use a lot of Exus 2 shells, but this is a team spotlight for Ghetto Blaster Inc. And this to me is just such a well shot, well edited video that highlights players, highlights the community, and I love that. That to me is fantastic and I want more of it. I cannot overstate how cool it is to me to see players be spotlighted. This is what I want to see more and more of throughout our community and I hope this is a continuing series from Jet because it's something that I thoroughly enjoy it and I've actually I want to watch it more just because of how well it's done and the ideas they put into this video with some of the editing and shot selection. Maybe it's it's part of my you know like I got my degree in film and television and whatnot so I'm enjoying that but it's a good video it's worth watching whatever your opinions on Jet. So go, please check that one out because it is cool to see Ghetto Blaster Inc. Spotlight and uh, hopefully we'll see more teams in the future for that. Now with that said, that's going to bring us to the end of the video. Just want to take a moment as always to say thank you so much to the patrons of this channel and uh, the people that, that support the channel just by watching, by sharing, by liking. All of that, whether you're just watching your first episode today or you've been watching since the beginning, I appreciate each and every single one of you. If you are a patron, you're in the $3 or higher tier. There is a poll going on right now for the next project to work on, so please go check that out. We're going to leave it up for the next couple days and decide from there. And if you want to see anything on this show, particularly news, uh, mods, videos, Say, uh, send those links down below, share what you want to see, and I always take a look at it. So thank you so much for all of you that contribute and help make this show what it is. Now, go check out that video right over here. Go check out the Mod of the Week down below, and let me you thought of everything in this week's episode. And if you're new to the channel and you enjoyed this video, feel free to hit that subscribe button for more in the future. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'm Jangular, and I'll see you next time.